Well, thank you guys so much. You know, I think we as humans learn best from our firsthand experiences. You know, we want our communities to be better places, but we have to first be better people. But secondly, I think we can also learn great life lessons through the stories that we're told, enriching, captivating other stories, stories of others. You know, throughout high school and college, I read great works of literature from all sorts of famous authors, Shakespeare, Salinger, Hemingway, even great philosophers like Aristotle and Plato. And we had to analyze these great works of art trying to cull the meaning of life. What is it that the author was trying to tell us? Sometimes some of the best stories don't even have to be highly intellectual. Sometimes we have great lessons to learn from simple stories. One college assignment in particular, we had to choose a story that had had a profound impact in our life and write about what life lessons we had derived from it. It was hard for me to choose because I had read so many different great things throughout my lifetime, but I kept going back to one particular story one mesmerizing story, and it wasn't a book that I had read. It was actually a movie I had watched as a child. You probably are all familiar with Robert Fulghem's book called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, where he talks about the, the lessons that he learned as a small child and how they're so relevant well into adulthood. Well, I have a similar theme, but it would be All I Really Need to Know I Learned from the Wizard of Oz. So I remember growing up in Iowa, just one state away from Kansas and the infamous Dorothy Gale, and I would wander through the house singing somewhere over the rainbow, and I remember hiding behind my mother when that tornado would come and whisk Dorothy away to Oz. But I did understand Dorothy's yearning for a life less ordinary, a new adventure. And I loved everything about that movie from the technicolor, to the costumes, to the songs, to the characters. I think it even inspired some of my fashion sense throughout the years. My love for sparkly high heel shoes, or at least ruby red slippers. <laughs> now, I don't know that my husband knows this, but I think it also inspired the wedding dress that I chose in 1997, because the first time that I tried it on, it made me feel like Glinda the Good Witch. <laughs> Now, in addition to my fashion sense, there are also many other lessons that this great and powerful story has taught me. And one of the most important that I derived is probably lesson number one, that we already have everything that we need to succeed inside of us. You know, we spend our lives on journeys towards self-improvement and fulfillment. You know, every January, right, people all across the globe resolve to make this year a better year for themselves. Dorothy begins her journey in Oz in search of a way home. Along the route, she meets many great friends and characters who are also on their journeys. The scarecrow in search of a brain, the tin man in search of a heart, the cowardly lion, of course, in search of courage. And the end of the movie shows us that each of these characters had everything that they needed, everything they were searching for was within them the entire time. Why is it that we seek out the wizard, the fairy godmothers of the world, the genies in a bottle? Because they're supposed to be the ones to grant us those wishes, right? Make our dreams come true? Well, in reality, that's wrong. If you want magic to happen in your life, you need to make it happen. It is up to you. And we're all human, and we want it all, and we want it now. So we're always in search for shortcuts, quick fixes, magic pills, so to speak, that will get us to where we want to go. Think about all the get-rich-quick schemes out there on the market, the anti-aging miracle lotions, the, even the latest fad diet products out there on the market. All of these areas are million, and sometimes even billion dollar industries. Why? Because they play to our childlike gullibility. That desire to want to be rescued by a knight in shining armor. That craving to be richer, thinner, happier, and all right now. You do not have to fall for the latest fads and marketing gimmicks. Think about your bathroom cabinets for just a moment. As I was getting ready this morning, I opened up my drawer. Think about all of the different products that you have purchased over the last couple of years. 
in order to be look better, feel better, maybe even smell better. How many of those items now just take up residence in your drawer, sitting idly, never to be used again? If your drawers are anything like mine, it's probably full of them. And I am willing to bet that your tendency towards magical solutions don't just stop in your bathroom cabinets. They're probably throughout your kitchen, your garages, your bedrooms, and even your bookshelves. My bookshelves are lined with several great self-help and advice books, but my favorites don't tell me anything that I haven't already known. The best self-help gurus out there on the market simply tell us in an inspirational or sometimes even a practical or manageable way how to do what we need to do. And these are things that we already know. It's not epiphantic advice. So it can be simple. You don't need a wizard. You don't need a fairy godmother to make your things happen. What you need to use is your mind, your heart, and your courage. And that's what can take you to wherever it is that you need to go. You need to be the driver in your, towards your success. And if you are waiting for a magical chauffeur to show up to drive you, you may never, ever get there. So that leads me to my second point that I have gleaned from the magical Wizard of Oz. And that is, it's the journey in and of itself that is the great and powerful part. It is the yellow brick road. That is your magic pill. It's the step-by-step -step process that you take on your journey. And yes, there's certainly those folks that do circumnavigate the yellow brick road and happily arrive magically at success. But you have to realize that those folks are the lottery winners of the world. And sometimes winning the lottery isn't what it's cut out to be. If you want to be successful, you just have to start down that path. You know, I am one of those crazy January resolutioners that I talked about. And every year, I try and think of some new challenge to make my life just a little less ordinary. And in 2014, I resolved to run my first ever marathon. And I'm slow as a turtle. But I began a 16-week grueling journey. And it, it made me sacrifice many, many hours of sleep. Early in the morning, I would get up before dawn to run my long runs before the hot summer sun. Week nine of my training involved a dangerous crash between myself and the sidewalk, and actually the entire left side of my body. But luckily, through the help of a chiropractor, I was able to get up and going again. Now, I would love to tell you that I took it all in stride, and I did it all with a smile on my face, but I would be lying. I moaned and groaned and complained every step of my journey. Actually, I'm still complaining now about it. <laughs> but I was, I, was de I was determined to win that badge of honor. And on September 14th, after nearly five and a half hours of running, I crossed that finish line. And I could not have been happier. It was a true accomplishment for me. And something magical happened when I crossed that finish line. All of my heartache was magically transformed by my pride. It also healed my blisters and my bruised toenails. There is something to be said for having to earn your success. My pain did heal, and it was worth the gain. I remember the first couple of times that I watched The Wizard of Oz being so angry at Glenda. Here she tells Dorothy in the beginning that if she wants to find her way home, she needs to search out the wizard. At the end, she finds the wizard, only to be told by Glinda, well, wait, you actually had the power to go home all along. You just had to tap your shoes. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Dorothy had to survive the spooky forest. She had to be drugged in a poppy field and kidnapped by a wicked witch. And she could have went home straight from the beginning. And it was hard as a child to derive the lesson from that. And I remember thinking, well, maybe this good witch isn't so good after all. But now I get it, and it is clear as a bell. Glinda's true advice was follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. 
Overcoming obstacles through hard work and perseverance is what makes our success that much more meaningful. When I reflect on my life and I think about the accomplishments that I am the proudest of, they are the things that were the most difficult or the most painstaking for me to do. And so now that you think that your lives have to be miserable and horrible in order to be wonderful, I do have another lesson for you. <laughs> and that's that friends get to be an amazing part of all of this. They are a critical element. I said earlier that you have to be the drivers in your life, and that is true. But you can load that vehicle up with as many crazy passengers as you want. <laughs> but choose your passengers wisely. Pick people that are going to contribute to your personal growth. Positivity fuels positivity. Negativity fuels negativity. If you want to be happy and successful, then surround yourself with people who are happy and successful, or at least the people who aspire to be those things. Long before my marathon, I knew I needed to begin my journey to healthy living. In 2010, I was beginning a new position in the health and wellness field at our local YMCA. But I have to tell you, healthy living was the furthest thing from my top priority. My two main food groups at that time were Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Coca-Cola. And I had not exercised vigorously since my high school days. Now, I knew what I needed to do, right, to be healthy. We all know that. Eat better, exercise. Oh, it sounds so simple. But I was afraid to start. My health journey began when a coworker came into my office and invited me to come with her to a cycling class. Her name was Becky, and she said, Tina, if you want to come, I will help you get your bike set up. And that day, Becky and I went to a group exercise class. And it was that class and her showing me the ropes that kick-started my journey for me. That same year, I completed 125 other group exercise classes. And now I'm running marathons. And it all began with a simple invitation. Now I invite as many people as possible to join me on every crazy adventure that I do in hopes to inspire them on their journey. I have learned so much over the last five years about what I'm capable of and what my body's capable of. And it was because a friend encouraged me. And I have since met hundreds of friends. And my friends are there to provide knowledge and support now, they don't complete my goals for me, but they do stand by my side in the trenches, and they distract me sometimes from my pain. So friends can make a huge difference in whatever journey. You just need to make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. Now, thrilling adventures, exciting, trying new things, trying exciting new things, I think Dorothy Gale and I would agree also leads to a final lesson, and that is, that you don't know what you have until it's gone. Now here I should also give credit to that 80s hair band, Cinderella, in case any of you are familiar with that music for also inspiring this lesson through their song title. But you know, I have been lucky enough to travel all around and do so many exciting things. But very few things have brought me the same joy that I feel the first night home after a long trip when I climb into my own bed there is something about that first five minutes sleeping on my own pillow under my own blanket. Now granted, this is the same bed that I sleep in most nights out of the year, but there's something about being away from it after a long trip that makes it so special, warm, and cozy. I think sometimes the comforts of home or our average ordinary lives are not fully appreciated until we've had an absence from them or worse yet, when they're gone for good. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna ask all the coffee drinkers in the room to give up coffee for the next seven days. Okay, not a drop. And if on day eight, you don't have the best cup of coffee that you have ever had in your life, then the next cup is on me. You know, birthdays growing up were a big celebration in my house. My entire family would go out to eat somewhere at some nice restaurant. And then afterwards, we would always go over to my grandma and grandpa's house for cake. And it was always a wonderful, special experience. But as I got older 
and as my siblings got older and we all had families of our own, we would try and rush through the cake part at Grandma and Grandpa's house. I remember even once asking my grandmother if she wouldn't mind, just bring the cake to the restaurant, Grandma, could you? So that we could speed things up a little bit. Luckily, my grandmother did not concede because in 2007, we lost my grandfather. And then a month later, we lost my father after a battle with cancer. My grandmother then went into an assisted nursing home and has since passed, and poof, just like that, cake at my grandmother's house was gone. Eight years later, and what I wouldn't give for a tiny sliver of her lemon cake and just five more minutes with those precious loved ones. Now, to take this lesson to heart, there is a solution without having to lose those things first, and it's called mindfulness. It's making a concerted effort to be aware of those everyday, ordinary things in your life that are truly extraordinary, because all those things are fleeting. So I encourage you to savor that cup of coffee that you have, or the walk that you take with your dog, or a hug you get from your child. Acknowledge all of those blessings, both big and small, because they will all not be here someday. Now, it's easy to say enjoy your average ordinary lives, right? But there will be times when average and ordinary still just aren't cutting it. You may feel stuck in a rut, down in a funk, depressed, bored, unhappy, or restless. And for times in your life that you feel that way, I offer you a bonus lesson today. When all else fails, <laughs> buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Now, I don't care if they are running shoes, hiking shoes, tap shoes, dance shoes, or high heels for a fancy night out on the town. <laughs> shoes are made to get you moving, and the perfect pair can do just that. You don't need a direction, just go forward. To begin your own awesome journey, all you have to do is take the first step. Find and follow your own yellow brick road. Thank you.